Breaking Bad may be considered one of the greatest TV shows of all time, and that's probably why I keep getting asked about this plane crash scene here. TV versus reality, coming up. Hey 74 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel 74 Gear is all about aviation. I don't watch a lot of TV, but I did watch all of Breaking Bad and I don't want to ruin the series for you if you haven't seen it. But basically this is about an air traffic controller who's having some family issues at home and is showing up to work. And while I don't want to ruin the TV show for you, I am absolutely willing to talk about all the things that are wrong in this aviation scene. Let's get into it. Wayfair 515, Albuquerque Center, Roger, climb and maintain 13,000. Juliet Mike 21, Squawk 4, 201, ident. Juliet Mike 21, climb and maintain 17,000. Clear direct to Albuquerque via the aircraft calling, please stand by. Jane Mike 21, turn heading. Disregard. Aircraft calling, say again. Lifeguard 46, clear direct Albuquerque, climb and maintain 17,000. There's a generic term that's used when you're talking about air traffic controllers and people just say air traffic control. And most of the time when people hear that term, they think of these guys in the tower here that are directing for takeoff and landing. However, while we're in flight, we're actually talking to a center. It's actually an office and they could be at the airport, could be near the tower, it could be anywhere really, it doesn't matter. But that's who we're actually talking to the majority of the time. The people you see in the tower there, we're really only talking to them when we're getting ready for takeoff or getting ready for landing. That's the only time we talk to them. But most people think air traffic control, they think of that tower and they think that person or those people are handling everything. But there's actually a lot more that are in an office similar to what this guy's in. As you get deeper into aviation, you'll start noticing that these controllers will say who they are, what they're doing. So you'll hear JFK tower say JFK tower or ground to say JFK ground. And in this case, they're calling himself center. Listen again to what he says here. Wayfair 515 Albuquerque Center, Roger, climb and maintain 13,000. Clearly the writers had somebody that was familiar with aviation that was helping them write their clips. So a lot of the words that they're using are correct, but this scene right here is very Hollywood. Clear direct to Albuquerque via the aircraft calling, please stand by. The communication system that the pilots are using with air traffic control is basically like a walkie talkie like when you were a kid, only one person can talk at a time. So while you're talking or while a controller is talking, nobody else is typically going to key up and start talking at the same time. Because you have two people talking on the same frequency at the same time, it sounds like this. When you hear those two people talking and you can't hear anything that's being said, that's what we call stepping on somebody else. So typically what I advise people is when they switch a radio frequency to listen for a few seconds before they start transmitting because that prevents them from stepping on somebody like what you heard there because nobody can hear what's being said. You're talking over each other. You can't hear the other guys talking because it's a one way frequency. When you start to transmit, you can only hear yourself transmitting. You can't hear the other person transmitting, but that audio that you're hearing would be like if you were air traffic control. You have two pilots talking and air traffic control can't really hear what either of you are saying very clearly, but he can hear that you guys are stepping on each other. Now clearly this controller doesn't have all of his stuff together. He is in a little bit of a zombie state, a little bit of a trance, whatever you wanna say. And they're kind of making it seem like he's being very robotic in what he's saying. And that is possible. Everybody's had a bad day at work. The difference is, is for a controller, you're gonna be in a room like this. You're gonna have a supervisor there. You're gonna have people around you. And if someone were to see you, and that kind of a state, they're not gonna let you get on and start working air traffic control because you have to be very focused on what's going on. It'd be like if a pilot showed up and he was just all, didn't have it together, just was totally lost and or drunk or any of those types of things. The other crew members aren't gonna be like, yeah, yeah, let's go do this flight. That's not how it would work. All right, let's see this next scene. Juliet, Mike 21, turn left heading 115. Wayfair 515. Traffic three o'clock, King Air, turn left, heading 085. Sierra Alpha, Alpha contact Albuquerque Center, 134.6. He keeps giving these robotic instructions and that's obviously to simulate the fact that he's totally out of it. The problem is, is that he is not giving time for the pilots to respond. If you're flying on a given airway, it's kind of like a road in the sky, you're flying along that route and that's the typical route that you're gonna fly. There's gonna be some left turns and some right turns and just kind of this road in the sky that you're flying. 
The only time air traffic control is going to give you a heading or bring you off of that course, it happens from time to time, but it's typically not the norm. It would only happen if there was maybe weather, another plane was in the way, or you were climbing and there was another plane that was going to be nearby so they want to get some separation from you. Things like that is typically when you're broken off of your, your road in the sky. However, when they give you that instruction, like a Boeing 123, turn left heading 085, and then Boeing 456, turn heading 265. If they were to give those instructions that way, he would have to say the first one, let that Boeing 123 repeat back what they heard, because every instruction that he gives, we have to repeat back so they can verify that we correctly understood what they told us. For example, if he said Boeing 123, turn heading 065, and I read back, all right, uh, heading 085, Boeing 123, he would hear, no, that's not what I said. I wanted you to turn to a heading of 065. So by reading it back, he's able to verify that the instruction that he gave was correctly understood by me and that I'm going to be doing the right thing. That also protects him in case I do something stupid. He says, you read back that you were going to do this thing and obviously everything that we transmit is recorded. So that is typically how it works. There are a few exceptions. If the controller needs to give multiple instructions quickly, what they'll do is say, Boeing 123, turn heading what was 065, break. Boeing 456, turn heading 085. They could give a break there, and what that means is you're not expected to read back the thing that they're going to tell you. They're going to keep talking, and they're giving new instructions to a new plane. Because what happens as a pilot is that when they say Boeing 123, if, it, if that's not your call sign, if your call sign isn't Boeing 123, you kind of just disregard, or you don't really pay attention to the rest of the things that they say. However, when they say your call sign, now you're paying attention, or when they say break, now you're listening again, and your brain just kind of gets trained to listen for when is it important to listen and when is it not important to listen. So that is typically how it works and there's one other very rare example and that's if you're ever taxiing around in Chicago O'Hare, uh, that those controllers there are just reading instruction after instruction after instruction and the only time they really expect you to give a read back is on a crossing runway. Otherwise, it's just a uh, don't stop moving, just keep going, which I can imagine if English isn't your first language, that would be a very hard airport to move around in. So listen again to what he does here. Juliet, Mike 21, turn left heading 115. Wayfair 515, traffic three o'clock, King Air, turn left heading 085. The way they're saying everything, obviously they're having someone that's involved in aviation help write the script because the phraseology, the words they're using are correct. However, the way that they're not leaving a break in there is very Hollywood because they need time for the pilots to read it back. And that's, of course, why we have two pilots up there. So that way, if one pilot, and this has happened and happens all the time, sometimes you'll hear a pilot say, uh, turn left heading 085, oh, 065. And that's because the other pilot heard 065 and was sure about it. So then that pilot would switch what he said, and then the controller will come back and confirm, correct, affirmative, heading 065. Something like that. So that's why you always have two pilots up there. You have, you're always backing each other up, trying to help each other out, and you're working as a team. And then the controllers are there verifying that everything is being understood correctly. All right, let's see this next scene. Contact Albuquerque Center 134.6. Wayfair 515, descend to 10,000. Juliet, Mike 21, do you have that traffic at your 9 o'clock? Wayfair 515, do you have that traffic? Okay, first things first, Hollywood, not everything has to be a massive explosion when it comes to aviation. Uh, there are actual scenes of planes having a collision in flight and it doesn't look like that. This right here is actually a real picture of a mid-air collision that happened after a big plane hit a small plane. It's, uh, it's really sad, but that was way back before technology had advanced to where it is today. Now back to the reality of it, the controllers do get a warning if planes are on a head-on collision or a collision course of any variety, like you saw those two planes that were starting to kind of converge together, they will, get a, they will get a warning about that. And they will typically tell the pilots, hey, just so you know, you have another plane here, 
at this direction or this distance in closing and this type of plane at this. They'll tell you all of that stuff because they know on our radar we're going to see it and they don't want us to be alarmed about another plane. They want us to know that they know that it's there and they will typically say they're going to level off at flight level 380, 38,000 feet. Let's say I'm climbing to 37,000 feet and this happened yesterday, I think when I was coming in here. We were climbing to 37,000 feet and there was another plane that was stopping at 38,000 feet and they told us, hey, there's a plane that's leveling at 38,000 feet, you're stopping at flight level 370, 37,000 feet. So they tell us that Partly so that way we know that we, I don't know, couldn't climb higher, but also so that everybody knows that he knows that we know then that also we know that he knows there's another plane there. So there's a lot of that verification that's, that's happening. And when you listen to a center control, not a tower control, you'll hear more of that stuff happening. When you listen to a tower control, it's a lot of takeoff and landings. It's a lot of it is very fast, especially in a busy airport like JFK or Newark or Chicago, any of those airports, it can go really fast. I'm actually leaving for Newark in like an hour. So it, I, I know that airport, I used to fly in there all the time. Things happen really fast. If you're not moving and talking fast while you're going into Newark, it really slows things up. So while we're up on the flight deck, this right here on the right, this is our radar. And it shows us all the planes that are going around us, even if we can't see them outside because we're in clouds. And there are three different colors that we're gonna see when there's a plane that's around us, white, yellow, and red. Now this radar, if you want to call it that, is part of a system called Traffic Collision Avoidance System. Pilots refer to it as TCAS, and that helps us look and see what's around us, and it actually will override any instruction that air traffic control gives us if there's a plane that's nearby. On the left here, you see how it would look if a plane is coming at us. And what it's doing is this red area here is saying stay away from this and start to descend away from the other traffic and the other plane is getting told to climb to get away from us. And the TCAS system is coordinating all of that. There are very few cases in where pilots can ignore or disregard what air traffic control is saying without letting them know first, but this is one of them. There have been some crashes in the past where air traffic control messed up and sent two planes on a collision course. And it's really sad, but that's what happened. And since that time, what's been a priority or what takes priority over anything that's going on, if air traffic control were to give you an instruction to put you on a head-on collision or a collision of any sort with another plane and your TCAS system told you, descend, you're descending. So you will override what air traffic control is doing and you will do whatever your plane is telling you to do. Descend, climb, maintain, whatever. And it's something that we do in training every year when we go into the simulator, we'll train for this situation. We'll do with planes above us, planes below us, planes on both sides of us. They, they train for all these different scenarios so that way we are competent for this exact situation because the reality is, is these controllers are human and so they are prone to make mistakes. In the instance that we have this situation, what would happen is we would disconnect the autopilot immediately and start our descent. We would start our descent because our plane says descend. Then it would tell the other plane climb. So those pilots would disconnect their autopilot and start their climb up. That is called a resolution advisory. We call it an RA. When we do that, first things first, the priority is aviate, fly the plane, disconnect the autopilot and start going down or start climbing depending on what plane you're in. And then you would let air traffic control know we're complying with an RA. They're gonna know that you were avoiding the other plane and they're probably gonna be a little bit in trouble. Look again as you see this plane that's coming towards this aircraft, it starts off white, then it gets to yellow, and then it, what's really in danger, it goes to red. And that's when we get instructed to do something from our aircraft. Now I had a situation once, I don't know, a couple years ago, I don't remember where I was, but we were flying and the controller jumped on the radio and said, traffic, 12 o'clock, same altitude, turn left heading, blah, blah. And then they radioed the other plane, said the same thing, and they got told to turn left as well because we're in a head-on collision, so we're going opposite directions. Now, that plane wasn't even in white on our radar. We didn't see it but they got a notification that there was a potential for being a head-on collision. It was a long ways away, and we ended up passing him probably about 20 or 30 seconds later, we were able to see him way off in the distance. Now, were we on a collision course? I don't know. We were obviously close enough that they were panicked when they picked up the radio to call us, and I could hear that anxiety in their voice. So obviously, anytime you can hear that anxiety from a pilot, if you're a controller, or from a controller, if you're a pilot, you know, hey, you better pay attention to what they're about to tell you. And it's not normal, it's not really the way it's supposed to happen, 
But if you're sitting in an air traffic control room and all of a sudden you get an alert because there was a mix up in the system, for some reason you had two planes that were on a head on collision course, you're not gonna just typically be like, oh, casual, no big deal. You're just gonna have that instinctive rush of anxiety. Now there was probably something that happened as a result of that after the case to look into what caused this situation, but we never even saw them as white on our radar. In the event that it would go white and they would be at the same altitude, it would show zero, zero, meaning this is on the, a plane that's on the same altitude that you're at, and that would really get our attention. And then it would go yellow, same altitude, you'd be thinking this is, this is gonna obviously end in an RA. Once it's gotten to that point, even if the controller starts talking, it's not gonna be fast enough that you're going to be able to avoid each other, so you will start your climb or start your descend depending on what plane you're on. Those two planes will talk to each other and say, hey, we're gonna go up, you're gonna go down. Boom, now they get the RA, we get the order to go down, they get the order to go up, and you avoid the mix up or the mistake from air traffic control. I decided to start giving Hollywood solutions instead of presenting problems about all the things that they did wrong. And in this case, they're using an air traffic controller who has some emotional problems to make a mistake that puts a lot of people's lives at risk. So they could have easily put Walter White in an airport here. It could have been a foggy day or something like that. And what they would do is clear one plane for taking off and told another plane to go ahead and cross the runway. There's been instances of this happening. It's really sad and there are systems in place to prevent it, but it's a lot more realistic because there is no uh, TCAS system on the ground like that. There are ground things to prevent it from going on. We have a bunch of lights and then we have our radar and you know, there's a lot of other things that are in there, but that's a lot more realistic than the scenario of two planes having a collision like you're seeing here. Because in that instance, automatically you're gonna get a resolution advisory to follow. If you got a pilot that wasn't paying attention, got, got told to clear to cross a runway, and then they fired another pilot off on a takeoff, it's possible and it's happened that there's been collisions. If you wanna hear an example of air traffic control having a situation with two planes almost hitting each other on the ground, I'll put a link to that video I talk about. It happens in Midway right here. If you wanna see some other drug-related aviation videos, check out this video up here. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.